How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another Play Arts Kai review. Today, taking a look at the DC variant Timeless Series Wild West Batman figure. This is one out of four that was released under the Timeless Series, the others being the Bushido, Sparta, and Steampunk Batmans. This one is the limited color version. Um, essentially, with this version, you get a more, um, I guess you could say, Batman colored themed look opposed to the original release, which you can kind of see here on the box art. And speaking of box art, let's take a look at that. Really nice looking um, artwork there. Again, it says designed by Hitoshi Kondo, concept by Alfred Phillips Holtz. Kind of, you could say maybe um, comic book reference to Grant Morrison's Return of Bruce Wayne, where uh, Batman gets uh, stuck in time by Darkseid or some, something about Final Crisis and he's stuck in the West. But the box here is exactly what you get with the original release, except for you get the little sticker to signify that's the limit colored version. Um, you get the Square Enix logo up top. You got the DC Comics Batman logo right there. It is a window um, box here, so you can see where the figure is on one side and then on the other side, you get a nice little write-up. So you can pause that later if you want to read. And it does have a nice wraparound um, art piece there, which is cool. And on the back here, some pictures of the figure. And underneath, again, you have the machine stamp for authenticity sake. All right. Bring the figure back in. And let's zoom in just a little bit. Really sweet looking figure. Um, I love the design, the overall look. Now, essentially, the difference between this version and the original is the fact that, like, the bat symbol here is gold or yellow on the original release, opposed to black. And a lot of the leather armor bits are a, um, a bluish purple, and the original was more of a burgundy, uh, like a brownish color. Brownish red. Um, so, and the same thing going with the hat and some other differences. The cape also had a little more weathering that you could actually see on the original release, which is something that I, I kind of like more than this one. This one's more of a gloss uh, metallic paint with a little bit of gold and yellow accents to kind of signify um, some wear and tear. But overall, it still looks nice. Really great detail on the figure, some you know, scratch marks within the actual armor, um, even to the head sculpt. Let's see if I can get a close up of, as you can see there, with the mask. Um, kind of reminiscence of maybe Lone Ranger a little bit, um, especially once we get to his accessories. Um, got some nice, you know, knives on the gauntlets to kind of give him that kind of a Batman-esque kind of look. And then just throughout, there's a lot of really nice um, texturing and design. And like with the buckles, the, the amount of weathering, shades, all that type of stuff, it looks really good. Um, even down to his boots with the stirrups. I do like that. Um, really great job. All right. The figure really quickly stands about um, a little over 10, 10 inches tall, almost 10 and a half, maybe if you count all the way to his ears there. Let me uh, zoom out there. All right. But still really, really sweet. Do some comparisons at the very end here. Um, let's go over his accessories and we'll go over his articulation. He does come with a couple of pairs of hands. He comes packaged with the, the two fisted hands right there. And you can see that there's a little bit of detail. Again, I really do like the the difference between the 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 paints and such. It could be a, maybe a tad bit too glossy. Um, I'm not sure if that's coming across on camera, but that's one issue. But his other hands, he does come with this hand right here, which is used for his knife and battering. And you can kind of see there's some little bit of weathering on it and then he does have a, a gripping hand for his grapnel gun 
And then he's got a left and right stylized hand. Just open, open hand. And then his weapons, hopefully you can see that. You get a nice batarang. He's got some gold. It's basically just all painted in gold with a little bit of, um, maybe a little bit of weathering here and there. He's got this knife. Unfortunately, the knife and the battering, there's uh, no place on him to house those, but you can kind of see where he kind of has them and such. He does have this, I guess, bat axe, <laughs> whatever. Um, I believe the difference between this version and the original, I think there's more, this is a red, reddish color instead of this uh, purplish black. Again, they got this um, black, but with some like purplish shade on it, and it does have some scuff marks on it. You can house this on him, which I'll showcase here in a little bit. And then he comes with his grappling gun, which um, silver with white, which is a really nice uh, paint that they did on the handle for the white. The original release, I believe, is a brown-ish color. It's different from this. And you can remove, this is a soft plastic um, to help you get it into the holster, but you can remove it. So there's that. And then he does have this um, like lasso on his back. Um, it is, I believe, attached. So um, I'm not going to pull it off. But you have to guess if you want, you can count that as an accessory piece. All right, let's go over articulation and where the, the weapons are, um, are housed. So his head is, I mean, this is typical play arts Kai articulation, nothing um, spectacular. I mean, if you're used to them, you know what you're going to be getting. Um, double ball peg for the head into the neck piece. The neck piece into the torso, though, unfortunately, is a hinge, so it just goes back and forth, but you do have some motion here. This is a floating piece, much like the crotch pieces of Play Arts Kai, so this won't get in the way. You can kind of just manipulate it a little bit if you want when posing him. As far as his arms are concerned, they're on a ball hinge that go into the body at an angle. Um, this is on a hinge, so you can get that out of the way so you don't lose articulation, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about right in there. Hopefully you can see that. But it's going in, so it's at an angle so you can get that kind of, that reach around, <laughs> reach around. But, um, because it doesn't, it's mimicking the butterfly hinge that we uh, used to have with the player sky figures. And then it's on that ratchet, so you get that, the ratchets in and out, and then it can rotate basically around 360 degrees. Um, you can get this out of the way to do that. You do have the uh, bicep swivel. And then as far as the elbows, wrist, and ankles are on that ball hinge where you can swivel at the top and at the base, and then you get the ratchet, 90 degree angle, pretty much. And they do hide well, being black for the elbows, black for the wrist, and brown for the, for the um, ankles. The chest, ball hinge, um, it's a little back heavy, so putting them like this kind of pops them back. This could have been better off with that hinge, maybe. You do get the gapping, unfortunately, from there to the side, as you can see. The back you don't see because of the cape, but it is there. But you can hide it, depending on what pose you have them in. As far as the waist, it's on a ball hinge also that's connected to his crotch or to the, you know, the, the hip joint. Floating crotch piece kind of gets hindered a little bit, stuck underneath the, um, the waist. So you kind of have to position it and it's a little bit tighter. So you can't get a lot of range of motion with the legs. So like that's about as far as you can go. You might be able to push it a little bit more and then back, and then it rotates on that hip joint. No thigh cut, double jointed knees, and they're not ugly, because you got the kneecap there. 
And then again, same thing with the elbow and the wrist for the ankle. You can rotate around to get that ankle rocker. And it's kind of odd. He does not have a toe hinge, a swivel or a hinge. So that's interesting. And then the cape is on the same ratchet ball hinge that the elbow is or wrist and ankles. And they plug right into the actual back of the figure so you can get some nice posability, just swinging them around, whatever you want. Have that wind swept. This is curled. Um, you probably could take some heat to it and try and manipulate a little more. Um, but yeah, I think it's a little too much. And then again, it is a nice coloring going back to that with the, the, the black with the purple bluish. Um, it looks good, but, um, I do like the original. It's a little too glossy for me. All right. Now, as far as his weapons are concerned, as far as housing them, you can take his gun and let's see if he'll stand for me here. All right. And you don't have to remove the grappling hook. You can slide it in this way, but it's a lot easier. Get the cape out of the way. And just get my hand out of the way. Slide it in just like that. That's pretty cool. And again, really nice detail on the pockets, the bullets, all that. And then you can just plug it back in. So, and then there's a, like a little bit of a hook right here, or not like a little spot for the ax if you wanna place it there. Or you could use the one on the back, and that's the one I usually use. And so it looks like that. All in all, not a bad looking figure. I will probably someday get the original release, but I, I wanted this one. A little harder to find. And I do like the color scheme and um, such. All right, so quick comparisons. Here's um, the Sparta Batman from the same line. See those guys next to each other. He's a little bit on the taller side. You think this guy would be just a tad bit bigger. And then here is the DC variant uh, Batman. And he's a little bit on the smaller side. So he, this guy's a little bit big. I didn't realize that to the original DC variants. All right, so uh, that's it. Really great figure. Um, if you like different styles of Batmans, then I would definitely check this out, um, whether it's the regular release or this version. It's not bad. So um, that's it. You gonna stand for me? Okay, cool. Um, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Check out Plastic Fanatics this or every Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here. And um, I will talk to everyone later. Thanks.